Hello, welcome everyone to the MATLAB and Simulating Robotics Arena. Today I'm here with Aurel Marianne. Hi Aurel, how are you today? Hello Jose, thank you for having me. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, and Aurel is going to be talking to us about a up-and-coming topic in the robotics community, which is uh, wheel and legged robots. And he's going to be talking to us about how to model and control them using simulations. Um, Aurel, the stage is yours. All right, so for today's agenda, I'm going to show you a control loop diagram of all the control loops involved in the simulation. Then I'm going to do a software demonstration uh, talking about the contacts, actuators, and the sensors involved. And then we're going to wrap it up by talking about the key takeaways and what can be done next for the development of this project. Starting off with the control loop diagram, uh, on the left side, we have all the con closed control loops uh, that are involved. And uh, at the top side, uh, we have two uh, closed lo close control loops uh, that represent the joints. And uh, then we have uh, in the middle of the diagram, we have the main one that uh, represent the IMU sensor and the wheels and then at the bottom of it we have the shoulder joints and their correspective uh, closed control loops and the way the way they work is that uh, each each of them they feed their output to uh, to control uh, the robot and make it stand uh, balanced in an upright position the most important one is uh, the one here in the middle that uh, are dealing with the uh, actuators for the motors of the wheels and uh, they take the uh, IMU sensor and uh, take the parameters from it and then they f they are being fed to two PIDs which control the wheels. Now moving forward I'm going to do a software demonstration for it. Thanks, Aurel. It looks like you've just opened up a Simulink model. Uh, would you mind explaining us uh, what are the different components of this model? Yeah, sure. So what I've opened here is the main system for uh, our uh, robot. And the way this system is uh, working is that all the blocks have been uh, reorganized into uh, different uh, subsystems to make it more simplified and to uh, make it similar to how the robot would look like so for example we have at the top uh, starting at the top we have the head subsystem the correspective shoulders uh, knees and uh, the subsystems of the wheels now at the bottom we have the contacts and the contacts are simply some blocks grouped into a subsystem which uh, allow interaction between the ground and the wheels that way the robot would not fall through the ground when the simulation is working. Now going back into the main system, made some uh, set points and a debugging area to uh, control more easily each uh, independent uh, subsystem for the, for the actuators. Now the main and most important uh, sensor for this uh, robot is the IMU sensor, which is just a transform sensor block, which allows uh, the robot to take the position and the angle of the robot and uh, use that to balance the robot in an upright position. Um, and if you guys are not familiar with this type of modeling, um, that includes the transform sensor and the 3D CAD imported to Simulink, uh, look into our Simscape multibody product documentation and there'll be lots of tutorials to teach you how to put your own CAD and your own designs into a simulation. All right, so uh, moving to the 3D visualization of the system. After we run the simulation, uh, we have a button to see what happened in the simulation. And once we click play, we see that uh, the robot falls from a slight distance above the ground then moves backwards because it has uh, some mass so of course the inertia brings the robot slightly towards its back but as it's trying to uh, self-balance in an upright position 
it uh, rotates towards uh, towards one of its sides and uh, this is probably because um, the top sensor which is the red geometry uh, could be uh, too light or causing a mass imbalance in the geometry of the robot or simply because the red geometry is uh, taking the reference point for the IMU sensor too much on one of the sides causing it to rotate all right so um, looking into the analysis of the robot and uh, trying to uh, see whether the simulation was working as intended here we have a, an output graph uh, which has the desired angle versus the actual angle and we see here um, a peak of the graph which was that initial uh, jerking movement uh, of the robot which was backwards and then as we move forward with time we see that uh, the graph stabilizes itself to make the robot uh, balance now some of the key parameters uh, which can be further uh, studied are some of the parameters which include the overshoot the rise time and uh, and so on now for some of the key takeaways of this project uh, to make the simulation more realistic uh, i had to uh, use uh, the geometries the masses and the forces such as the gravity the same to represent to have a realistic representation of the simulation i have also used the damping and the stiffness coefficients for all the joints and the wheels uh, same with the coefficients of friction the dynamic and static ones uh, to make a representation between the wheels which uh, are simulated to be uh, rubber and the ground to be simulated as it if it were cement now uh, moving forward with the system modeling approach uh, the way the system was reorganized was to uh, have a visual representation of how the robot looks like to make it easier to debug as well as to study the behavior of the robot and uh, tune it properly and also to test it accordingly now some of the parameters which i have uh, manipulated along the way are the pids and the set points and that was done via trial and error to uh, have a correct uh, outcome of uh, to have a correct and uh, desired outcome of the behavior of the robot and if you're interested into exploring how you can potentially also use um, automatic ways of finding coefficients for your controllers uh, you can check out the documentation for the control system toolbox uh, and simulating control design which will also help um, moving forward in a project like this so for uh, what could be done next in the development of this project uh, the controller's performance could be improved so for example uh, as we saw the robot was moving uh, on one of the sides and the controller's performance could be modified to make the robot balance in an upright position without it uh, turning uh, left or right and some other challenges to implement some other features for this robot could be uh, to make it uh, jump or to have each individual legs uh, moving vertically to overcome uh, some other obstacles now for some other different approaches to uh, to solve this challenge and make this uh, robot work could be to implement a linear quadratic regulator a model predictive control or a reinforcement learning okay that looks great thank you so much Aurel, for sharing your project and all of your development with us um, if any of you are interested in, in following along more closely with Aurel's uh, design i think the files will be available in the description below and if you had any questions um, you can always reach out to our team in mathworks at robotics arena at mathworks.com or through our facebook group uh, which is also robotics arena thank you everybody and have a good day.